Hello everybody, this is Tim back here with his sixth Freddy review, a Horror Nightmare Nights review. Notice the shitty makeup, Freddy's dead, the final nightmare. Freddy's makeup in this film is like so pink, he looks like a piece of bubble gum or some type of uh, children's candy. But yeah, his, uh, his makeup in this film is horrible. Let's see, Freddy's dead, the final nightmare. Film stars Lisa Zane, Sean Greenblatt, Leslie Dean, Yafit Kodo. Uh, the film is directed by Rachel Talalay. Um, okay, let's jump straight into this film here. New Line Cinema felt after the fifth film didn't do as good as the fourth film at the box office. That of course it was time to end the franchise. <laughs> Why, I don't know. This film skips, I believe, ten years after The Dream Child. Uh, so any characters or any continuity continuity that's been built up for the first four films is automatically gone. It's all gone. <laughs> so anybody you cared about from the four and five, you know, forget about it. No more Alice. That plot that plot line is completely gone. So that disappointed me. I would have much rather have seen just a better movie that was a sequel to The Dream Child than a movie that skipped ten years in the future. I guess. Maybe they wanted to do it like that so they could kill the character off, but if they ever needed to, they could go back and just do a sequel to Dream Child in between the in between the gap of the films. But they never did, so this is what we got anyway. <laughs> but yeah, this film, it's not that good. It's more entertaining than Part 5, but at the same time, it's, it's almost worse than Part 5 because it's just it takes the jokey, more mainstream aspect of Freddy... And just fucking cranks it up to like a a, a, a nineteen. <laughs> Freddy, this is the most comedic one of of every Nightmare on Elm Street film by far. And I guess if you're gonna do that, you know, uh, if you're gonna embrace that aspect, at least make it funny. So you know, it comes to the question of whether or not the humor's funny. Once again, Robert England plays Freddy good. He seems to be having a much better time playing Freddy in this one than he did in Part Five. He seems like more there, more there into the role. But um, that doesn't change the fact that this film is not that good. It's obviously not the final nightmare, but it might as well be because it kind of is because it's the last film, you know, in the in the regular like series continuity. Because New Nightmare is like an alternate universe, and Freddy vs. Jason is more like a spinoff film. So this is pretty much like the last, you know, actual go out with Freddy. So you know, it better be good. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't supposed to have been the last one, just watching it as an Elm Street film by itself, as just another sequel, I wouldn't be as hard on it. But judging it like this, you know, as supposedly the grand final of the character of Freddy, I gotta be a little bit more stricter on it. <laughs> but to jump straight into the film, it's ten years after the Dream Child. Um, all the continuity of the first four films built, or first five, I mean, is completely washed away. So this is an automatic fresh story. Now that's what makes the film feel a little bit better than the fifth film, which was a little dull because it was a continuation of the same story built upon for the first four films. That and the fifth film just wasn't that good. Now this film has more of a fresh feel to it, so it automatically makes it you know kind of more fun um, than part five. Which the part I would say part five is dull. This film is just stupid. <laughs> but is it stupid fun? You know, is it fun to jump into the film? Um, you got. This kid who, John Doe, character John Doe, who we never learn who he is. We never find out who he is. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just make him Alice's son, but if they did, you know, him being the dream child, you would expect him to be the hero. If they made him Alice's son, but instead he would have just been another victim. So I guess it's a good thing they didn't do that. What happened to Alice and Jacob in between the films, we don't know. I guess it's just assumed they moved away. Obviously, Freddy broke out of his ghost mother's body in between five and uh, <laughs> this film and killed all the kids in the town. Which, if all the kids are dead in the town, if you're all you, if you could never have kids in that town, why wouldn't you just move out? And not to mention, why doesn't any uh, another authority, you know, like <laughs> know that the, there are no kids in this town? Why is there no outside authority, you know, that came in and said, "What the fuck's going on?" <laughs> but I guess we're supposed to believe that you know Freddy is somehow like blocking other people out from knowing that there's no kids in this town or have any idea of like what's going on in this town. I'm not for sure if that's what they're going for. They don't explain it too well, but whatever. But this kid's like got a fear of heights and he's like flying in an airplane 
And uh, I guess he's uh, thinking he's going to get out of Springwood. And he obviously he's in a dream and he has a nightmare on a plane. You could have fun with this with a plane nightmare, but they don't really do much with it at all. Um. So instead, well, you do get a funny moment where he like looks over to this woman and sitting next to him, and he says he's afraid of heights, and the woman says, "Don't be a pussy." And all at once, she fucking like comes flying up the top of the plane. <laughs> I thought that was funny, that was entertaining, and he, his seat, like, falls, like, through the bottom of the plane, and he wakes up in his house, and then this is when you get the stupidest scene of the entire franchise, where he's fucking in his house, and it's spinning like it's in a tornado, and he opens up the window, and there's fucking Freddy riding on a broomstick, and he says, I'll get you my pretty and your little soul, too, and I'm like, what the fuck, movie, come on, you can come up with better jokes than that for Freddy, come on, please, that's just too fucking cheesy and zany and over the top for me. This whole film feels like if Bugs Bunny directed a Freddy Krueger film. That's what it feels like. But, um, you get that stupid shit. The house crashes. Uh, he falls out the window. He sees the Elm Street house. He runs, like, jumps over a fucking uh, side of a mountain and rolls all the way down to the bottom. You can tell he's pushing himself a couple times, so I'm like, eh. Then he finally lands on the bottom. He's Bob Shea Cameo, who's like this fucking ticket booth operator, and says, uh, Hurry up, boy. You don't want to miss the bus. And not once he gets... John Doe gets fucking hit by a bus. <laughs> the fucking bus. Like... In this film, uh, all the kids in, uh, in Springwood are dead. So Freddy's, like, bound in Springwood. He can't leave. It's like some kind of barrier up. Um, he's uh, he's bound there. He can't leave the town. And uh, so Freddy runs, his, runs him over the bus. And you get kind of a funny line here where Robert Englund's like, No screaming while the bus is in motion. There's some funny stuff here. The film has a lot of funny stuff in it. But some of the comedy is just like so zany and too over the top for my taste for the Freddy Krueger character to be doing. So he runs over and uh, John and fucking like hits him like through this uh, fucking like uh, hits him through the barrier. And it leaves like a cartoon looking cutout sketch there. And I'm like, okay. But I don't have too much of a problem with it because it fits the movie. Because this is like a Looney Tunes Nightmare on Elm Street film. He goes flying through the, the, the barrier and hits his head on a random rock. So I'm thinking, was Freddy's plan the whole time for him to lose his memory? Because Freddy needs him to like go from Springwood into a random town. Like the next town. So is Freddy hoping that he'll just like ha go to that town? I mean, what if he would have just kept going? Or what if he would have just met somebody on the road and got mugged and got shot or something and got killed? <laughs> But, uh, I guess Freddy had, I guess he planned ahead really good. I don't, I don't know. But you find out in this film that Freddy has a daughter, basically. And then John Doe's lost his memory by hitting his head on a rock. He thinks he's Freddy's kid, even though the timeline doesn't match up at all. Freddy's kid would have to be like mid-20s to early 30s or something like that. So the timeline doesn't match up at all. But the author of the movie, he's like, I must be Freddy's kid. I must. And I'm like, no, you fucking idiot. You are not Freddy's kid. But whatever. Um, so he manages to go to that next town, and he's there, and he like gets took to the shelter, and they try to make it a little bit of a mystery about who's Freddy's kid. But it's Lisa Zane, the character of Maggie. It's obviously her because she has dreams about like uh, getting to, well, her as a little girl, and her dad like following her around in the yard and playing with her and shit. And so obviously we know it's Robert England because we reckon we recognize his voice. So you know what the fuck? There's no mystery there. So what? Anyway. <laughs> So, we automatically know who Freddy's kid is, and she's the only one that can bring him out of Springwood. He has to, like, go into her mind and, like, hitch a ride in her in her body or whatever, I guess, and head to the, and head to another town so he can kill people all over again. So, um, by coincidence, I suppose, uh, the Freddy's plan works out exactly the way he wanted it to, and you know, fucking John, you know, gets took to the shelter where Freddy's daughter just happens to work. And while he's there, he has, like, he has, a nightmare. he has a nightmare, which is kind of entertaining, where he's in the Elm Street house, and he doesn't have any memory of like his, his life or whatever, because he's got amnesia, and he walks up like these invisible stairs, and he fucking sees himself uh, in a straight jacket in this padded room, and he, he, his own self turns around, looks at him, and goes, free me, you idiot, I'm your fucking memory, which I thought that was mildly entertaining. Um, uh, so Maggie decides to take him back to Springwood, um, because they both have dreams of this little girl, who obviously is the young Maggie, and uh, there's like Yefit, Yefit Coda there, who works there as like a psychiatrist, but he's more, I think a psychiatrist, but he's more like a dream therapist, really, but uh, he works there, and he want, he thinks that they, that she should take him to Springwood, because there's a connection between her dreams and his dreams, and his dreams mean bad news, and maybe they can, uh, you know, f figure out what the fuck's going on, I guess, 
So they decide to go to Springwood, and you got these three characters who like hitch a ride in the in the van who want to who are trying to like break out of the shelter. You got fucking Brecken Meyer as his character named Spencer, who's like dad is like a a rich dad who's like trying to fuck a rich guy. I mean, who's trying to like impose his lifestyle on his kid, which I'm not really sure if that can, if you can go to a shelter for that. I'm not really. I don't know. <laughs> kind of seems out of place compared to the other two. You got like a deaf boy who's like mom abused him and fucking made him go deaf. And then you got this other girl who named Ch character Tracy who was molested by her father. So I'm like, this kid's problems don't really seem that bad at all, to be honest, compared to these other two. But he's still at the shelter, and they all sneak into the fucking, um, in the van that Maggie's driving so they can try to break out and sneak out of the shelter, I guess. But, um... John has like a fucking hallucination of little little fucking Maggie like on the on the road like the little girl version telling him to like go back and that he causes uh, Maggie to like turn off the side of the road and that's when they discover uh, Carlos the deaf kid um, Spencer and then Tracy uh, hiding in the back of the van so they go to Springwood they're looking around um, they uh, you get some kind of neat stuff here. Where it's kind of supposed to be like a ghost town, but or almost a ghost town, but there's still some parents, the parents and adults there, but they're kind of experiencing like a fucking mass psychosis where all the kids are gone. If you think they just leave once again, but I don't know why they don't leave, whatever. But um, and you would figure like these people would have relatives in other states or towns or whatever that would go, yo, what happened to my grandkid or something like that, you know? Uh, <laughs> And the authorities would be there in a second, but no, we don't get that, so I don't fucking get that. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> you get a cameo by fucking Roseanne and Tom Arnold, who show up, and they're, like, talking to, uh, uh, Spencer and fucking, uh, Carlos and Tracy, and Roseanne's like, I want my children back, and Tom Arnold's like, you know they bring him? Talking about Freddy Krueger, and I'm like, hey, you don't need these two in a cameo in this film. I don't mind Tom Arnold too much, but still, you don't need these two. And it just adds to the zany... Looney Tunes fucking quality of this film. It's not horrible, but you don't really need them, I don't think. But you got them showing up there in a pointless cameo. Then you got fucking uh, Maggie, who's who she thinks her name's Catherine. That's like what her adoptive mom named her. So well, I'll just call her Maggie since that's her real name. No, no, what? Never mind. Her her name is her name is Maggie. That's her what her adoptive mom named her. But the character, but her real name is Catherine. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll still stick with Maggie, though, since that's the name I've been calling her. But Maggie and John, they're, like, checking out the school, and there's a fucking teacher there, and you get kind of a funny scene where he's, like, spouting off, like, history, like, uh, stuff about history, but it's, like, Freddy Krueger history, and he's, like, 1,493 Freddy sailed across the sea. I thought that was mildly funny. And then you find out that Freddy Krueger had a daughter. Now, the idea of Freddy having, like, a daughter or whatever, I don't... I, it's kind of weird to me of picturing Freddy as like a family man or something. I always pictured him as kind of like the guy who kind of kept to himself and was more like a loner, maybe, or a guy who didn't spend a, a lot of time hanging out with other people. Maybe on like a, or maybe only like every now and then. Kind of like the guy who was like friends with people, but they really didn't like him, but didn't say anything to his face. I kind of pictured uh, him more like that. But uh, no, apparently he was more like a. Uh, a family man and kind of like a serial killer who just pretended to be normal and but was really crazy at the same time. So that kind of feels awkward seeing the Freddy character represented that way. But uh, I guess I can go with it a little a little bit anyway. So you find out Freddy has a daughter. Um, you also find out in the film that not only was Freddy Krueger's vengeance against the, the killing the children of Springwood, not only because he liked killing children, and also not only because it was vengeance for them bar for the parents burning him, but also it was vengeance for the for the t fucking town, the people of the town taking his daughter away from him. Which I'm like, what? You don't need that. You don't need that. You don't. And at the earlier in the beginning of the film, you get like a scene where they're like. Uh, Maggie is talking to uh, Yefit Coda about these fucking like dream demons who he has like a, a coincidentally has a picture of who are supposed to like roam the dreams of the living until they find the sickest most inhuman person imaginable and give him like the power to cross the line and turn nightmares into reality why you know, why do they do that I, they're demons I guess they just don't have anything else to do <laughs> some more information on those creatures would have been interesting but um that just seems really tacky. They just seem really thrown in there just to explain how Freddy's able to use the, how he's able to do the stuff he does. 
since he's got these powerful dream demons inside of him, I guess. They're what gives him the power to kill people in their nightmares. So, I mean, you don't really need that. But I, if you're going to explain how Freddy can do the stuff he can do, I mean, come up with something a little bit more interesting than that. But it just seemed tacky. But anyway, so you got those things in the film, which look like CGI sperm worms or rod puppet sperm worms or something like that. But you got them in the film. Um, when it comes to the death scenes, they're pretty fucking bad. The characters here are better than the characters in Part 5, only because the story in this one feels more fresh. And even though I believe there is only three deaths in this film too, the story just feels like, like it has more to it and feels more fresh than the story of Part 5. Even though I like the story in Part 5 better of the idea of like Freddy uh, coming through the dreams of an unborn baby, is I think that's actually a really inventive idea. I don't think they did anything with it really in Part 5. In this film, I have the idea of like Springwood having like no children or anything left could be really spooky and really creepy, but it's played up as just like a zany episode of the fucking Looney Tunes. So I hated it. And as far as death scene go, uh, Carlos' death scene is the one I, only one I really enjoy. Carlos' death scene, he's fucking like <laughs> he has a nightmare. Well, he fought. Well, uh, uh, Spencer, Tracy, and Carlos they go to the fucking Elm Street house to spend the night because they ain't got nowhere to go while they're in Springwood. So they're there, and Carlos falls asleep. He has a fucking nightmare where his uh, mom is there and she and turns into Freddy Krueger and he fucking rams a Q-tip, like a giant Q-tip, all the way through the side of his ear, throughout the other side. And Carlos has to fucking like pull it out. It's like, damn, that looks like it hurt. And then uh, you get some goofy shit, but it's actually mildly funny where Freddy is like behind Carlos who now can't hear, uh, completely can't hear, I don't guess. And uh, he's behind Carlos and he's like fucking leaping up and down and shit. <laughs> That's like mildly funny. He like takes his hat off and jumps around in a circle. That's okay. That's mildly funny. But then you get like a stupid ass scene, fourth wall breakage bullshit, where Freddy turns around, and looks directly at the camera, and goes shh, like at the audience. And I'm like, oh, God. Freddy knows he's being filmed. I'm like, you don't need that. That's just too much. That's too much for me. That's exceeded my comedy boundaries right there. You don't need that. <clears throat> But then you get kind of an amusing scene where Freddy gives him back his hearing aid and he puts it on. It gives him like fucking super hearing and Freddy like drops all these pins down on top of him. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny. But then Freddy takes his chalkboard and like scrapes on it because he has super hearing and causes his fucking head to explode, which is like mildly funny. It would have been I would have been all right with that. That was fine until you get the really corny ass fucking one liner where Freddy goes, "Nice hearing from you, Carlos," and I'm like, ah. Please, no more. No more Franny. No more fucking Franny. Freddy stand-up comedian shit. I've had my feel. But, um, uh, that was bad. That line was bad. But then, uh, Spencer falls asleep on the bed. I mean, on the couch. You get kind of a funny scene here where Johnny Depp actually has a cameo. And he's on the fucking TV. And he and Spencer's like a, a pothead. And he's doing like a, a anti-drug commercial. And he's like, got an egg. And he's like, uh... And busting on a frying pan, he goes, this is your brain on drugs, and he goes, any questions, and fucking Freddy knocks his brains out with a frying pan, and says, yeah, what are you on, looks like a frying pan and some eggs to me, <laughs> I thought that was funny, the way Robert England delivered the line was funny, I like that, and he's like, hey Spence, let's trip out, and it plays like in the Gata de Vida, and fucking, uh, it turns into like a music video looking thing with these psychedelic colors like coming out of the TV, and absorb Spencer into the fucking TV, that was mildly amusing. I like that. But then this will go down in history as the worst, worst death scene in the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. This is the worst I've ever seen in the entire franchise. Where Car uh, fucking Spencer is inside of a fucking regular Nintendo video game, and he's getting hit over the head by like, um, fucking uh, video game versions of his dad who keeps saying "Be like me." And then he eats a, an apple off a tree and says. Super Spencer, like he's powered up and he's got like red glow over him and then shoots uh, his dad with like some uh, fucking old school video game graphic effects and blows the, the blows the fucking video game version of his dad up. And I'm like, what? That's so fucking stupid. That is too much for me. And then you get a horrible Freddy line where he sees the dad blow up on the game and he goes, great graphics. And I'm like, oh God, I, I can't handle much more after that. I can't. Um... So John and fucking uh, Tracy are like wanting to, trying to help, you know, save Spencer because his body's like jumping around in the real world like a fucking Looney Tunes leapfrog. And he's like bouncing up and down and hitting the ceiling with a goofy look on his face and I can't fucking stand it. Um, it's so bad. 
uh, Maggie wants to try to, you know, she wants to try to save Spencer, and she's been trying to figure out what to do. And through the movie, they're like, John is like trying to figure out if he's a, uh, if he's a uh, Freddy's kid, which he thinks he is, pretty much. And so eventually, they're all in the Elm Street house, and like I said, they want to try to save Spencer, who's now being attacked by Freddy. And Maggie is there now, after her and John have got done investigating about who the fuck's Freddy's kid. Um, so, um. John gets Tracy to knock him out with a piece of wood. He falls through a table and lands in a dream world, which is an entertaining scene. Um, although Tracy told him she knew an easier way, and somehow she just meditates and goes into the dream world, and I'm like, okay. But anyway, um, so she's there. Uh, John is there, and they're going to try to save uh, Spencer, and they fucking like kick the remote control out of Freddy's hand, and then... Freddy closes the door, and they can't get in, and he goes, Hey, forgot the power glove! And I'm like, the fucking power glove? This, you know, this is definitely a dream world, because the fucking power glove, if anybody who's like a video game aficionado knows that the power glove is a worthless piece of shit that never fucking works. So, anybody who knows anything about video games knows that it's a piece of shit. So, Freddy then kills Spencer with the fucking power glove, and kills him inside the video game with a video game version of himself it keeps punching him in the face and in real life he's like on top of the stairs of the elm street house and falls down the steps into this fucking random hole in the ground and that's how he dies and freddie says a cheesy ass line where he goes hey i beat my high score <laughs> i'm like okay some of this stuff is like mildly funny but it's so cheesy and so silly for a freddie movie it's just so over the top just too over the top that i can't get into it but you get that stupid shit, um, then the TV starts bleeding, it's like a decent scene where the TV starts bleeding, and Freddy absorbs, uh, Spencer's soul, and then, uh, Tracy gets woke up, and, uh, so John has a nightmare now where he's, like, fucking, he's in the, he's in his house again, and he's, like, saying, nothing's gonna make me get off this bed, and then the fucking bed starts burning, and I'm like, oh, this is so funny, Rachel Talalay, that's so hilarious, <sighs> And so he gets off his bed, he fucking leaps out his window, and he's got like a parachute on, and he's got a, a, a fucking tag on it that says pull in case of emergency, and he pulls it and his parachute comes out. More, it's like such Looney Tunes style shit, I hate it. And the fucking parachute comes out, and then uh, underneath him you can like see Freddy like pushing his bed of spikes up there like fucking Wile E. Coyote style. It's <laughs> so fucking stupid. And then so John falls on the spikes and dies from that. Right before that, Freddy tells him, of course, that he wasn't his dad. It's like, duh. <laughs> so then Freddy hitches a ride inside Maggie's head. And of course, Maggie drives through the barrier. And her and Tracy head back to the, their town. And that fucking breaks through the barrier. And it breaks apart like glass, which is a decent scene. And he tries to, he, he gives fucking Maggie a nightmare where he, well, he goes and he, Maggie has a dream. Where she finds out, of course, she's Freddy's kid. Big surprise there. And he uh, basically tells her her real name's Catherine. And he says every town has an Elm Street. Talking about how he's going to invade this new town now. Which I like that line. Every town has an Elm Street. I do like that line. I'll give the movie that. But, uh, yeah, so he, then he goes after Tracy. And Tracy has kind of a really creepy dream here. You know, uh, it does kind of a little bit too dark for the, <laughs> the style the movie's been going for. But I, I don't mind it. Because it's creepy and dark. Where she's like, her dad's like trying to molest her again. Except, you know, it's Freddy in disguise as him or whatever. And <laughs> it kind of doesn't fit the tone of the movie, but it's alright. But anyway, so he's like trying to molest her again or whatever. But she turns around on him and fucking beats his brains out with a coffee pot, I believe. And then his, half his face is like all twisted up. And he's like, no honey for daddy. <laughs> and I thought that was, that was mildly amusing. And it fucking transforms into Freddy, and he's like, what's with kids today? No respect. I actually thought this one line was funny, where Tracy's like, you can't scare me anymore. And Freddy goes, oh, you better speak up. It must be my deaf ear. Talking about Carlos. I thought that was mildly funny. But then she jerks out some kung fu, because she's like a, she practices fighting in the movie, and she kicks his ass, and Freddy goes, kung fu this bitch, and not knocks her down. But she burns herself on the stove and wakes herself up, which I'm like, that's kind of smart, I guess, for a character to automatically do that. But at the same time, I'm like, that just seems weird that someone would automatically think of that. You know, that they could just burn themselves and just wake up. But I don't know. I don't have too big of a problem with it. But still, it just seems kind of fast. 
So she goes to talk. They she wakes up and her and Maggie are gonna try to stop Freddy. They they go to the dock, which played by Yafik Coda, who does fine in the movie, but he's supposed to be like this dream expert. And Freddy has the ability. Freddy like erases the memory of Carlos and Spencer, and John and whatever from everybody in that other town. So he can like erase the memories of people, I guess, because he has so many souls by now. Because Freddy should be at like his most powerful in this film, because he has so many souls. But it never really explains how he does it. Uh, but whatever, I guess we're just supposed to assume it's just because he's so powerful now. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so they go to the dock. The dock's having a nightmare where he sees Freddy, and Freddy starts doing like fucking cartwheels and kick kung fu kicks, and it comes off so stupid. The dock like beats the shit out of him with a baseball bat. But then you get kind of really amusing scene here with Robin England plays it fucking great, where he like gets up and he's like naming off the ways that he's died. And he's like, first they tried burning me, and he fucking like cuts off a finger for each one. He's like, then they tried burying me, and he cuts it off. And he's like, but this, this is my favorite. They even tried holy water. And he cuts that one off. I thought that was really funny. Um, then he goes for the dock. And then, uh, of course, the doc wakes up because he was, like, meditating, like, dream meditating, I guess, or something like that with some machine that he had on him, had on his head or something. It wakes up. It's like a timer. He had it set on it. So he wakes up. Freddy doesn't get to get him, and, but he manages to pull off a piece of Freddy's sweater so he knows that they can kill Freddy in reality. They can bring him into reality, which is the same thing Nancy did in the first film. But in this film, they do it a little bit different. They want to bring him into reality and destroy him kill him, kill his actual body instead of just like taking away his energy like Nancy does in the first film. So it's a little it's a little different. It's a little different, but it's still really close to the same thing they did in the, the original film. So I'm like, this is supposed to be the way they finally kill off Freddy. Couldn't they come up with something a little bit different? Because Freddy dies differently in every film. So you would think that in this film they would do something, you know, even more different, but they don't, really. Besides the just killing him in reality, which is just still a little bit too similar to the first movie. Uh, in the scene where he's like naming off different ways that he's died, though, I would have liked that Robert England would have actually like named off the all the ways that he's died in all the films prior. Could you could you imagine he could be like, first they tried burning me, then they tried taking away my energy, then they tried the power of love, then they tried burying me, then they tried showing me my reflection. I'm out of fingers. Oh shit. <laughs> But, uh, maybe he could switch hands and be like, you know, then they tried sealing me in my own ghost mother's body. <laughs> but anyway, and so after that, they decide to bring him into the real world to stop him. Maggie decides to go under, uh, go to sleep, try to bring him out into the real world. And that's when the ending of the film is in 3D, and the 3D looks like shit. It's old blue and red 3D. It's old school 3D, and it looks like shit. Um, I've watched the film in 3D, the ending, and it looks like utter shit. They couldn't really come up with a really cool way to kill Freddy, so instead they decided just to um, you know, do it in 3D. Maybe that would make up for it and make it at least more fun. Um, but still, it, it's not. The 3D looks like shit. But you get a really stupid, cheesy-ass fucking thing here where Maggie uh, wants to like see through Freddy's illusions, so the only way she can do it is to put on these 3D glasses, which enables her to like see stuff or the way it really is or, or something like that. And that's like so fucking stupid and cheesy. I hate that. So she puts them on in the dream world and she can like see stuff as it really is in a whole new dimension. So she like goes inside Freddy's mind and sees all Freddy's memories, which is kind of amusing, kind of neat. I like this, seeing Freddy's memories like this makes me really want an Elm Street prequel. Uh, so she sees Freddy's memories when he's like a little kid and he's like killing a fucking hamster with a mallet or something like that. Not a mallet, but from the tone of a sledgehammer, but from the tone of this film, it might as well be a fucking mallet, like a cartoon looking mallet. But. He kills a fucking like hamster or gerbil or whatever, and these kids are behind him saying, calling him son of a hundred maniacs. That's a decent scene. Um, and they're like phasing out from like how they look as kids to the way they look as adults. Uh, I guess it's like how they look to Freddy. But that was kind of a neat scene. Uh, and you're gonna get another memory of Freddy's where he's like a teenager and it's like he's cutting on himself trying to learn the secret of pain. And fucking Alice Cooper like cameos as his uh, stepfather. Which I thought was kind of neat. And Alice Cooper's like whooping him with the belt. So you get the idea Freddy was abused as a kid. Which, you, you know, it kind of makes you try. It kind of seems like it's wanting you to sympathize for Freddy a little bit. But not really. It almost makes you want to see the same like, you know, this is how someone like this would have came about. Which, you know, he probably, a person like this who, who would turn into someone like Freddy probably was abused as a kid. So I'm not, not too, not have too much of a problem with it. 
but uh, Alice Cooper's like whooping him with a belt, and he's like, "It's time to take your medicine, boy." <laughs> and uh, he like fucking uh, grabs the grabs Alice Cooper's hand and goes, "You want to know the secret of pain? If you can stop feeling it, you can start using it." No, he just puts the razor like towards the camera, like you get the idea that he's killed Alice Cooper, but you don't even see it. So I'm like, "What the fuck?" But whatever. So you get that, and then you get to see like when Freddy got burnt, and that's kind of an amusing scene, huh, seeing Freddy get roasted alive. But then you get to see how Freddy gets his powers from these little sperm worms, fucking dream demons who just appear there while Freddy's starting to get burnt up, and they go, Freddy, we know what you want. And he go, and Robert England goes, I want it all. <laughs> and they're like, of course you do. Open up, and you shall be forever. <laughs> They fucking just like go inside of him, and I'm like, oh, did he already know who they are? Or know who they was? Or what? He doesn't give you enough backstory on it. It just happens like all at once, and I'm like, okay. Uh, I guess they were just trying to explain everything about Freddy just to send the movie out with a bang, and they explain some. They show some cool stuff with like the memories and stuff, but the Dream Demons is just stupid. I would have liked something better than that. But anyway, um, so you get that, and then you get the. Uh, Maggie gets to see what happened to her mom. She found out like what Freddy was doing, you know, killing the kids. And Freddy didn't like her snooping in his shit, you know, his special work as he calls it. And he fucking strangles her to death. Tells Maggie that, uh, or tells Catherine, I guess it would be to him that his uh, mommy just had to take her medicine for snooping in Daddy's special work, <laughs> which I thought Robin England delivered that line funny. So he ki he basically kills his wife. Uh, Maggie said, "Oh, well, Catherine says she won't tell on him, but of course she did tell on him, and I guess that's how she—that's how he got caught, actually. So that's kind of a neat idea that his own daughter ratted him out, <laughs> which would make sense considering she saw him like strangle her mom to death. I would say that she probably would rat him out. But um, so I guess that's how Freddie was was caught because of that, because his daughter ratted him out. So that's mi mildly interesting. That's okay." So he gets ready to, like, uh, I guess he's going to attack Catherine, but at the same time, he doesn't seem like he really wants to kill his daughter. He just kind of wants to get her out of the way, I guess, because she's his daughter. He has feelings for her no matter what. But she ends up getting the better of him, and she gets a hold of him and takes him into the real world. So now he's in the real world. Uh, obviously, he can be hurt here. At first, he appears without any burns on him at all, so I'm like, okay. Uh, he tries to trick uh, tries to trick Maggie, making him think that he actually cares about her, but she don't fall for that shit, thank God. <laughs> she fucking, like, knocks his glove off his hand. Uh, they get into a duke him out, and it seems like Freddy gets his ass whooped to me. It just seems like Freddy gets his ass whooped way too easy. Like, he's not fighting back that much because she's his daughter. He's not putting up that big of a fight. He gets his ass whooped pretty bad. I mean, like, she fucking bites him on the nose and says, in your dreams, because he wants his glove back that she takes from him. And she fucking, like, uh, stabs him with throwing stars and jujitsu knives and everything, which is our <laughs> fucking ju jujitsu stars or whatever, or throwing stars, I mean. And uh, knives and everything. She like stabs the shit out of him with all of them. Then impels him with his own glove. Which I thought was mildly entertaining. That was decent. She stabs him with his own glove. She pins him to a wall. She stabbed him with all these different knives and stuff. And you got kind of a stupid scene where, where they're first getting in a fight. And he grabs her by the throat. And she's got this like big mallet in her hand. And she slings it directly out of the way. Instead of fucking hitting him inside of the head with it. Which I don't know why. But uh, they're getting into a fight. She's got him pinned up against the wall. And then you get fucking... She gets dynamite, stabs it in his chest, kisses him on the cheek, and says "Happy Father's Day," which I thought was mildly funny, and that was that was mildly funny. But then after that, you get Freddy looking directly at the camera and going, "Kids," I thought that was so fucking stupid, so cheesy and so stupid. Not once he explodes and you get like this weird, crazy-looking 3D effect. 3D effect where his head flies at the camera and blows up, and it's got like another head inside of it, and it blows up, and then the dr fucking dream demons are like flying around, and I guess we get the idea that because Freddy has no body now, they can't bring him back to life like they've done previously because there's no body to bring back, but in some way, shape, or form, he eventually reconnects with them and comes back <laughs> a couple of years from now to cause the havoc that's mentioned in Freddy vs. Jason and, and through that movie, but uh... But anyway, so this is a demise for him here. Uh, this is supposed to be like the final film in the regular series, not counting the spinoff, Freddy vs. Jason, and not counting the alternate universe, you know, uh, New Nightmare. But uh, this is supposed to be the final film here, so he gets blown up like that in some weird 3D fucking looking way and says kids at the, from right in front of the camera, which is really silly. And then Maggie looks directly at the camera with Yep at Coda and fucking Tracy out there standing and 
she she looks right at the camera and goes, Freddy's dead. And it's like so cheesy and you can just see like the other two actors just waiting for her to say it. They're like, come on, say it, come on, say it. It's like, since the franchise, I don't like a really cheesy, silly note. Freddy's deaths were, Freddy, <laughs> Freddy's death in this film is not that great. His death in Dream Master was much more final than his death in this film and was a much better way for the character to go out. The film should have stopped at three, but if they had to keep going, then they should have stopped at four. Um, cause five, starting with five is when the franchise starts going downhill. Um, but New Night, New Nightmare redeems it slightly, and I'll get to that one next. But, um, yeah, this is, a this is only an okay two-star film. Um, it's not great. <laughs> For Freddy Final, it's pretty bad. But if you just watch it and embrace it, well, Freddy vs. Jason actually works better as the final for the character, because that's really the last time Robert England has played Freddy. So that works better as the final for the character, with him going out in a battle with Jason uh, much more than this does, uh, or going out with a battle with Jason. That works much better than what, how he goes out in this film. It's just bad. But if you can just watch the film and embrace the silliness of it and have fun with the comedy, then it's entertaining. It's more entertaining than Part 5, and the characters are better than the ones in Part 5. Uh, other than Alice, Alice is better than any of the characters in this film. But um, but other than that, this film is still mildly entertaining just because it's fun. And some and some of the shit is really funny. If you watch the film, just not worry about it being like supposed to be the final Freddy movie and just like watch it as like an over-the-top, silly, zany comedy. Some of the stuff is pretty fucking funny. And I can see why it would kind of be a... I can see almost that this film could be a cult movie, kind of. Uh, but if you watch it like that, just as a silly, stupid comedy, you can have a lot more fun with it than trying to watch it as an actual Freddy movie. But uh, as it is, it's only an okay film. Um, it's about even with Part 5. Uh, it's more enjoyable than Part 5, but at the same time, Part 5 is more respectable because it treats the character of Freddy in a more respectable way and is less of a joke as this film does. Even though he's more of a... He has, like, constant one-liners in Part 5. The stuff that he actually does in this film is so over-the-top and silly that it's just, it's worse. It's worse. Um, so this would be the weakest film just because of what happens in the film to the character and how he's used in the film. But it was, it's still more fun than Part 5 and more enjoyable to watch. It's just the way the characters handled in the film is what makes it worse than Part 5. So I'll see you guys again with Wes Craven's New Nightmare. And this is a, only an okay two-star film. Just a passable two-star film. And I'll see you guys again with the much better Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Oh, and before I forget, uh, the original script for this film was called like The Dream Police. And fucking had like a Alice come back and she was killed off by Freddy in her 30s, which that would have been entertaining to see for a Nightmare on Elm Street film. I mean, for a straight sequel to Part Five, and Jacob, her son, was going to be the main lead. I've read the script for the Dream Police. It's not much better than Freddy's Dead, but it it is better and more decent. And that script, Freddy's fucking like killed off by his uh one fear, like he gets killed off by his own fear. And they use his own fear against him. That would be kind of interesting to do. Uh, that's more interesting the way they kill him off here. And uh, one of the characters like characters like transforms into his stepfather, who's like the only person he's afraid of, and like fucking rips the souls out of Freddy's body. Like literally rips all the souls back out of his body, I believe. And Freddy dies from that. That I would have liked that ending actually better than the ending we get here. That would have been better a better ending for the character. I think by him getting killed by his own fear would have been a better ending than what we got. Although that ending wasn't perfect either, seeing Freddy like think picturing Freddy like cowering in fear and stuff is kind of weird, but uh, him getting killed like that though was still a better ending than what we got here. But and also the original script for part well one of the scripts for part four I believe Wes Craven and Bruce Wag Bruce Wagner wrote a script for part four that was about time traveling through dreams. Uh, I would have liked to have seen that. I would like to have seen a, a fucking time travel movie through dreams it would probably be pretty cool, and I would have rather have seen that than this film too. <laughs> But New Line Cinema thought that was like too much of a too high of a concept for the Nightmare on Elm Street audience or whatever. Like I guess too out there or too too much of a thinking you know idea that the audience, the horror audience would be too stupid to get it. I guess I don't know. That's usually what studios think. But I would have liked to have seen that idea. Another idea for this film was that was Peter Jackson's idea called uh, the Dream Lover, which is a kind of a stupid title. But it was going to be about Freddy who's like real weak now and he has not much power and he like kids go into dreams to like treat him as a joke and beat the shit out of him. Which would have been kind of kind of weird 
but they could have made it work. I think Peter Jackson could have pulled it off, but he finally managed to get some energy and take a, take one of the kids' dads hostage, and the boy has to like go into the dream world and try to save his dad. That could have been entertaining. I would have liked that better than this film, too, <laughs> but we didn't get that either. And uh, one of the ideas for part five, also the dream child that we never got, was it's going to be like there's a dream pool, I believe. Uh, inside the dream world and you could dive through it and go into different people's dreams or whatever and they could like go inside even Freddy's nightmares I think that he used to have when he was human and I think that could have been interesting I believe that was one of the ideas the dream pool or something like that that could have been interesting that was a creative idea too but no didn't get that added on in any of the movies either it's like they keep taking out the more interesting concepts in some of the films and doing away with them and giving us the more dumbed down just versions of the films but studios we're horror audiences okay we're kind of picky but we're not incredibly stupid you can give us an interesting idea and still keep it you know slasher slasher fun and fresh uh i mean slasher still keep it you know the slashing fun and still keep that you know the audience that wants just the slashing you know satisfied and you can come up with an interesting idea to keep the audience who wants you know something new and interesting and fresh you know satisfied too or something you know more of a high concept but uh, as it is, this film is a, just a passable two-star film. It's a weak way for the character of Freddy to go out, but if you're just wanting to watch it and uh, just have some laughs, then you'll have fun with it. And I can see little kids like really liking this film as their favorite Freddy just because it's so over-the-top and fun. But as an adult, it's only a passable two-star film. Um, but I'll see you guys again with the much better Wes Craven's New Nightmare.